Today we're going to continue uh, with the new lecture. Lecture 6, uh, which is going to be on uh, basically frequency response. And uh, until now, we were talking about um, applying, you know, either a stress or an electric field on the piezoelectric material, you know, which we normally draw as a box with the arrow going through it. Uh, <laughs> so, but uh, we normally talk about it as a static, as a static field. So basically, we apply a stress. You know, and if you apply stress to open circuit condition, uh, what we're going to get is a polarization, which is uh, described by this equation. So we don't talk about the case where what happens if the stress, you know, instead of being uh, a constant value, what if that stress was changing over time? In this case, changing with the frequency omega and this is a stress versus time over time so what if we had a stress like this now what would be the polarization what would be the displacement in this case similarly you know if we have an electric field applied uh, we don't need to apply a static electric field necessarily like we've been talking about if we apply a, an electric field uh, which is varying which is time varying we will see a much different uh, effect on the material properties and the actual the device performance. So when we talk about uh, frequency response, the main uh, kind of game changer in this sense that we mentioned in piezoelectric electric materials, we have electro mechanical coupling. So basically we if you apply an electric field uh, we get movement. Apply an electric field, the material gets bigger by applying a field. This is positive, negative. We apply a field, the material gets bigger. Uh, but this is a mechanical kind of stress that this induces. See we, we remembered from the last lecture uh, we have if we have a electric field acting on the piezoelectric electric material um, we have this type of relationship with the strain and the piezoelectric decons in the electric field. Uh, but we mentioned we can also write it in terms of stress. So by multiplying each side by 1 over s, we can change this factor into stress. And this becomes a factor called E, uh, which E is equal to D divided by the uh, e is equal to d divided by the Young's modulus, or the um, divided by the elastic compliance. So this is actually a force, and I mentioned that piezoelectric materials they are like a spring. Remember we were modeling like a piezoelectric material stuck to a wall. We apply a force; it's going to have some type of spring constant, and that spring constant is dictated by the geometry and also the compliance or Young's modulus, whichever one you'd like to choose. So we have this displacement. Delta D, I'm going to call it this. So we have this kind of energy. And we also, therefore, we have potential energy. If we apply a force over time, we're going to have the uh, material both having kinetic energy due to motion and potential energy. Because if we apply an electric field, which is time varying, we're going to get a stress or a force, which is also time varying. And thus, we're going to get a displacement or a strain which is time varying and this we're going to get a velocity which we're going to call lowercase v is velocity we're going to get a velocity occurring in the material which is also time varying so due to this uh, you know electromechanical coupling we get time varying displacement and strain with a time varying electric field and time varying electric displacement and strain and very basically a time varying stress 
on a um, piezoelectric material is can be modeled like this. So we have a spring, a very classic model. We have a mass, and you have a damper. The damper is characteristic of the losses. The spring is the spring constant, uh, which is the mechanical energy. So it's related to the compliance. And the mass uh, and its velocity, rather, the velocity of the system. And we have some displacement here. We have a displacement, or let's call that um, d bar. Let's call it displacement d bar. So we have a d bar, which is time varying. And then we have a velocity, therefore, which is time varying. So because of this fact, this system, which is identical to a piezoelectric material system, which not doesn't have a bias. And this would be a constant field, you know, plus minus power source. But we actually have a power source that looks like this. Maybe you recognize it. It means the AC amplitude of EC field. So the electric field is equal to a time varying function. So electric field varies over time. Thus we have a uh, thus we experience a time varying force. Thus, we utilize and we can achieve uh, a special condition which is known as resonance. And this condition of resonance, it occurs in both electrical systems we know it as the LCR circuit, basically inductor, capacitor, and resistor circuit form a resonance system. Also we have it in the uh, mechanical system. We have a mass, spring, and to represent the losses we have a damper. So this material system, the piezoelectric material system, from using this applied electric field, we can actually uh, witness mechanical resonance. In this case, we don't have electrical resonance, we have a mechanical resonance due to the geometry. So, P, uh, so in general, uh, when we describe this mass spring damper system, and I encourage everybody to read about this if you're not very familiar with this resonance system. We're going to highlight a couple of important points about it that we need to know for piezoelectric materials, but we're not going to dwell on it. Uh, we're not going to dwell on the intricacies uh, per se. So this is called a mass spring damper system again. So uh, this system it has a resonance frequency. So we'll describe what we mean by resonance. So if we have a plot, let's draw a little plot. And uh, we have frequency here. And we have displacement amplitude here. So we'll call that, or we can call it strain, whatever we want to call it. And in piezoelectric material, we're going to be have we're going to have strain. Uh, so let's say we have this source, this alternating electric field uh, applied to a piezoelectric material, and the electric field is equal to um, E time varying times E naught. So the amplitude. of this electric field stays constant, although it's changing over time. So the amplitude is constant. Uh, the amplitude is E0. Uh, but the field is also changing over time. So depending on this, changing this uh, omega term, uh, which is the angular frequency, which is related to 2 pi times the actual frequency. The actual frequency has the units of 1 over second, which is hertz. This is not 1 over second. This is really cycles per second. We usually hide that when we're writing it. 
So basically, there's going to be a distinctive frequency called a resonance frequency. And at this resonance frequency, we get large displacement. So you can imagine at low fields, we get a constant value. So dx dE equals the strain. So at low electric fields, at low frequencies, the frequency doesn't really make a difference very much. But as we approach the resonance frequency, we get a lot of displacement. And then what happens is that it drops off. So obviously this is a nice, cur nice curvy, uh, a little more continuous, not so jagged uh, line. But in a sense, what we have here is that we have a vibration amplification. at resonance. So this is the this is a one uh, you know key point to take away here. We have vibration amplification in resonance conditions at this distinctive resonance frequency. And we'll describe next lecture uh, what this resonance frequency is, how do you calculate it, and why does it even exist in the first place. We'll discuss all of that uh, in the next video. Thanks for watching.